Hey guys, in this video, let's discuss some basic information regarding variables. So overall, a variable is simply a named set of memory locations. Now, similar to how labels were used in assembly language to abstractly refer to memory addresses, and also similar to how other symbols, such as those created with the .equ uh, preprocessor directive, were used to abstractly refer to meaningful constants, variables are ultimately going to allow a programmer to manipulate data stored within memory in a simplistic manner. Now, as a concrete and preliminary example to how variables can be utilized in C, um, the following statement will basically assign the uh, name and the label var to some 8-bit unsigned value stored within memory. Now this particular association with it being 8 bits of memory and that memory being interpreted as an 8-bit unsigned value is specified ultimately by this type specifier, this keyword uint8 underscore t. So this will create that association for this label. Now, if we wanted to actually, let's say, update the memory uh, and the value within that memory, we could do something as follows. We could set that label equal to some value, let's say hex FF, and hex FF is a meaningful value in this case, um, and it can fit within that eight, bit, uh, eight bits of memory associated with this label. Now, if we wanted to further um, a couple other examples of how we can manipulate the data within that memory, we could use this following operator that will ultimately subtract three from the value currently stored within that eight bits of memory. And then we could also further with this other operator, as an example, we could shift that value to the right twice. And this is just two basic preliminary examples of how we can manipulate data, but just to kind of drive the point home of how variables allow us to abstractly refer to data and memory locations. So as I've kind of already implied, the usage of, the, of a variable such as the above is quite simple. Um, now in general, there's gonna be several things to consider when utilizing a variable within the C programming language, but for the purposes of our course, we're generally only gonna consider um, pretty simplistic things regarding variables. Now, with that being said, our main consideration for variables will usually regard the type of data that the variable is to represent. And we saw a type above with the uint8 underscore t keyword. And there's gonna be plenty of others we're gonna talk about in a second. But beyond keeping a programmer aware of how some data is to be represented, so in other words, the uint8 underscore t example above let us know that that data associated with that label was going to be an unsigned 8-bit value. The specification of type allows a compiler to also more effectively generate assembly code when manipulating the data associated with some variable. So for instance, above, when we had the code var um, uh, right shift by two, since var was ultimately defined to represent an unsigned 8-bit value within memory, the generated assembly code that the compiler is going to generate will ultimately and should ultimately perform a logical right shift rather than say an arithmetic right shift. So in other words, when that value is shifted to the right, since it's unsigned, zeros should be shifted in on the left-hand side rather than potentially ones um, since we assign the value to be hex FF. So that's just one example of how um, compilers, remember, will actually translate our C code into assembly code and the compiler uses type to figure out how to manipulate the relevant memory. So conceptually, unfortunately, there's going to exist an infinite number of data types provided by the C programming language. Um, but for the purposes of this course, we're generally only gonna consider a few. Um, now for the remainder of this particular video and this file, let's discuss some of the most prevalent and basic types that we'll utilize in this course. Now throughout this overall tutorial, we'll cover some more details regarding data types, um, see some different ones, as well as some other various aspects regarding variables but let's try to keep it uh, short and sweet for this particular video. So the first key one that we've already seen, first type already used above is uint8 underscore t. Now uint8 underscore t again is meant for variables that are to represent an eight bit unsigned value. So again, in memory, we're gonna assign some variable with just eight bits of memory. Now this is um, 
This ultimately should be the most common type utilized within this course, which makes sense because our microcontroller that we utilize is an 8-bit microcontroller. So it's going to usually be the case that whenever we manipulate data stored within memory, we're generally going to be manipulating 8 bits of memory, and it's going to be efficient to do so in most cases for our microcontroller. So we're going to try to, uh, whenever, whenever applicable, utilize just 8 bits of memory, or is the least amount that we can. So whenever unsigned values, though, are not appropriate and we want signed values, there's a complementary type, int 8t, which is meant for, again, 8 bits of memory, where now that 8 bits of memory is to be interpreted as a signed value. So for instance, if I were to assign this variable that I have labeled here var2 with the value hex ff, now this value hex ff, um, when interpreted, let's say if it was shifted to the right by 2, similarly as we did above, this, the compiler would see, oh, this is a signed value. So now maybe I will generate assembly code that interprets it as a signed value and shift in uh, ones into the left-hand side and do an arithmetic shift rather than a logical shift. So in this case, hex FF would get translated to negative one, but we don't have to usually think about that at high level terms. We can just write something like the syntax negative one. Just recognize that the compiler is what does that translation ultimately. Now, um, whenever 8 bits is not sufficient for either signed or unsigned values, we can utilize 16 bits, which is the next size up generally uh, provided by the C language. So uint 16t is very similar to uint 8, except now there's 16 bits of memory that's going to be interpreted as a 16-bit unsigned value. And then 32,000 should be an appropriate value that could get stored within uh, an unsigned 16-bit variable, for instance. And then signed, um, negative 32,000 could fit in a signed 16-bit variable, just make sure that you keep in mind the actual range of two's complement for some sets of variables that are signed. Um, and then whenever 16 bits is not enough, we can bump it up even further to 32 bits. Now, primarily in this course, we're only ever going to try to utilize 8 bits and 16 bits whenever applicable, but only uh, maybe once in a while we will uh, need to utilize a 32-bit variable. So we would generally, in those cases, use something like a uint32t or an int32t type. Very similar as before though. And I'll let you guys figure out some maybe example definitions you could have. Now, beyond these types that manually, that are in terms of pretty much integers, there's a couple other types that will be prevalent in this course or um, somewhat common. And one of them is the type char. And the type char is generally meant for variables that are to represent character codes within some character encoding. In other words, values that are to be associated with some written characters. Now, generally thus far in this course, we've considered the ASCII or the um, encoding ASCII, which is a pretty simplistic, basic encoding. Um, now, to be a little bit more technically accurate, we this entire time haven't really been utilizing pure ASCII encoding. We've been utilizing um, within Atmos Studio, the encoding has been code page twelve five two, otherwise sometimes referred to as ANSI. Um, so like for instance, the memory window, whenever there was text interpreted from data in the memory window of a debug session, that would be an encoding of code page 1252. And it's actually also the case that the compiler uses a separate character encoding for when it actually converts characters into um, the relevant character codes within memory when it programs your microcontroller. And that default character coding is UTF-8. And we're not going to get into too many details now. I just want to at least mention that um, for all intents and purposes, we can consider that our character coding is in fact ASCII because even though these we're using separate encodings and different in these our, our actual environments, the first 128 character codes ends up being the same for both ASCII and those other encodings. So that's why we generally for simplistic and for simplicity, we uh, consider ASCII rather than those other more slightly more complicated encodings. Now, some as some examples of defining variables regarding characters, we could have the following C0 through C5, let's say just spelling out the word hello with an added exclamation point. Now, what I'm just trying to get across with this, these examples is showing that in the relevant encoding, for instance, um, in all of these three encodings that I just previously list listed, these basic English letters as well as the basic English symbols and other symbols that we're used to will get translated into the same encodings provided by ASCII, which the H, in, for instance, would be translated to hexadecimal 48, E to hexadecimal 65, and so on and so forth. So just keep that in mind. And um, But ultimately, whenever we try to utilize characters, um, written characters, we want to store those meaningfully within 
a char data type normally. Now beyond the char data type, another common type that we will sometimes use is the float type. Now the float is basically just used for whenever integer values are not sufficient and we need fractional based values. So for instance, let's imagine we needed the value 1.25 for whatever reason, we could use the float type to specify that value. Now, we generally will not try to use floating point values because in, in, in essence, floating point values are pretty involved or operations involving inv operations regarding them are pretty involved. So they become involved um, even with certain hardware, but the, the bottom line is, is that our microcontroller, unlike uh, standard computer architecture that you may use for your laptop or desktop computer, we do not have special hardware dedicated to performing floating point operations, which that hardware is usually called a floating point unit. So in essence, whenever the compiler needs to perform floating point operations regarding some floating point variable, the assembly code that actually will get translated ends up being very involved. It'll translate to lots of assembly instructions, which will then take lots of clock cycles, be less efficient than if we can utilize integer values instead, and ultimately maybe can take a lot more or somewhat more power than a less or smaller program. So overall, we will try in general to um, avoid the use of floating point values whenever possible. And there's only really maybe one or two instances that I can even think of that they might be necessary for the course as it stands now. So in general, try to um, avoid them and try to utilize integer-based values. Now, the only other thing besides um, these types, these are the only types I wanted to mention prevalent, most heavily for this video, is that um, it may be useful to mention the reason we utilize, or that I will suggest that you all utilize these standard types, uint8, int8, and six, the ones for 16 bits and 32 bits, etc., rather than some other basic types that you might be already familiar with or that you might see in other literature. If you look up C, dot, uh, C literature, you'll see some types, for instance, uh, like int. And int by default translates and is utilized usually for a signed integer and can also be an unsigned integer if you use this keyword unsigned int. But the reason I will actually suggest that you all utilize um, these more particular types that I've specified already is that the these other basic types such as int, unsigned, etc., the amount of memory associated with those variables that you might define with those types is actually compiler dependent. So in our cases, with um, when we have our compiler within Atmos Studio, which is called the AVR GCC compiler, um, unsigned int or int variables will actually get associated with 16 bits of memory. Now in our cases, again, we want to usually utilize 8 bits of memory for data whenever we can since we have an 8-bit microcontroller. So in this case, utilizing int is, is not as appropriate there, but another good reason is that if we wrote code that utilized um, these, these uh, compiler-dependent types, our code might not translate well to other microcontrollers if we were to um, write our code, write some code, and then translate it over or port it over to some other microcontroller. So even though we're not gonna really do that for this course, it's a good habit to, whenever possible, be more explicit with how much memory is utilized for some variable. And we're gonna try to uphold that within this course, or at least in the videos that I cover. So pretty much besides that, that's all I wanna mention about um, variables in this video. Recognize there is a lot more to learn or there's a lot more details that are pertinent in general, but this is some primary information that we wanna start with. So in the next video, let's start some other topic coming right up.